Hi there, welcome to my channel and I'm very happy to see you here. My name is Soy and I'm a UX designer at Google. How to create a UX case study and how to create a UX portfolio are some of the most popular questions that I've been asked by so many people. So I'm thinking of talking about portfolios in every two videos to answer some FAQs and I thought it would be helpful for some of you who have similar questions. A UX case study is a critical piece to showcase your skills and to convince employers of your value. So in today's video, I would like to do something creative by following a design process to talk about how to create a successful UX case study. There are a few key factors of a UX project, preparation and background, target audience, the problem statement, the process and the solution. If we create a case study as if building a UX project, then the target audience would be hiring managers and recruiters. The problem you are going to solve is how to showcase your experiences and skills in an effective way to convince employers that you are a good fit for the role. Let's touch on the key factors and follow a design process to talk about how to create a UX case study that will impress your interviewers and to help you achieve your career goals. On my channel, I am dedicated to all things about UX job interviews and product design. So if you're interested in this content, make sure you hit the bell button and subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss my future videos. I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one career coaching to help you nail your next job interviews. So if you want to get more career advice, do a mock interviews, or just talk about career development in general, please use the link down below and sign up for a session. Also, follow me on Instagram if you want to reach out to me or just learn more about what I do outside of work. My Instagram handle is soydesign underscore pics. If you're into fashion and jewelry and are looking for OOTD inspirations for professional or social occasions, definitely check out soydesignpics.com, a designer jewelry website where you could find fabulous collection of fine jewelry for every occasion. No matter if you're looking to wear jewelry that would make you look professional at work, or picking party ready jewelry, Soy Design Picks has everything you need. Okay, let's get to the beef of this video, which is how to create an effective UX case study. First of all, let's set up the right mindset that creating a good UX case study is not easy. I would actually have to use the word exhausting to describe the process of building a portfolio and adding case studies. I understand that some people have very tight timelines and they need to add case studies to their portfolio as quickly as possible. And I get questions like, Can I create a case study in one week? Can I just have one to two case studies in my portfolio? I would say if you really want to create case studies that meets the hiring bar, the answer is no. In theory, the best practice is to keep your portfolio case studies up to date while you work on those projects instead of adding case studies only before you start to look for jobs. To be honest with you, I always procrastinate to add new case studies until I decided to look for new opportunities. Because adding new case study is a really time-consuming process, it is not fun to me and I don't really want to do it unless I really have to. So be patient with yourself and do putting hard work into creating a compelling case study. It is okay to update your portfolio right before job search, but do get ready to go through a very long and tedious process of creating effective case studies. And you will find a return worth the time and efforts you have invested in creating high quality case studies, which will help you land your dream job. Before adding a new case study to a portfolio builder, I would first of all create a doc to outline some of the basic structures of the case study. For example, in a case study, you might have sections that talk about target audiences, the problems you are solving, and your solutions, etc. Think through what are some sections you want to add to a case study, and writing them down on a doc would help you organize information in a clear way. And if you want to shuffle the order of certain sections, the cost of shuffling them in a doc is less than shuffling them once they are fully polished in a portfolio builder. I also found it helpful to write down content in a doc first instead of drafting them from scratch in a portfolio builder because it's likely that you will have to make edits either right now or later. And editing content in your portfolio builder would need you to pay attention to not just the content itself, but also the styling and a lot of other details. Also, a lot of tools like Google Doc support spelling and grammar checking, but not many portfolio builders have that. 
So if you could get the content right in a doc and then copy paste it to your portfolio, it's going to save you a lot of time making back and forth changes in a portfolio builder. I would also try to get important visual materials ready before creating a case study because they will have an effect on a case study structure. For example, I would try to finalize lo-fi, hi-fi's, prototypes, and any other important visual materials that I can use to demonstrate my design skills before creating a case study structure. Because visual materials are one of the most critical components of a case study, by having visual materials ready, you will be able to better think through how to organize the stories you are going to tell. For example, there might be a few key screens in your design solutions that you really want to highlight in your portfolio, then you might want to think about how to create a case study structure to organically tell a story of the screens and maybe present them as sub case studies within the structure. Similar to any other UX projects, the secret of creating a successful UX case study is to engage your audiences. First of all, you need to understand who your target audience is and what their behavior is. In the context of presenting a case study, your target audience are hiring managers and recruiters. They are usually very busy in their day-to-day. -day. Although you might have spent weeks or even months to put together a nicely crafted UX case study, as a matter of fact, a lot of audiences would likely only have at most five minutes to browse through your portfolio. They will quickly scan through it, and it's very likely that they will pay more attention to the visuals in your case study, and they won't be able to fully read through all the text you have in your case studies. So what we need to do is to create a UX case study that will grab your audience attention and impress them in 10 seconds. How can we do that? We're going to talk about it in the next part. The problem we're trying to resolve is how might we create a compelling UX case study to engage hiring managers and recruiters and to make yourself stand out. To solve that problem, we need to clearly understand what they're interested in. From an employer perspective, they're most interested in learning about the following. Product thinking, interaction design, visual design, design methodology, project impact, and team collaboration. So you might want to make sure you have provided enough details on things that employers are looking for more signals. Tip number one is that in your portfolio and your case studies, you want to rank up things that really interest employers. For example, if one of your case studies is comprehensive and can demonstrate a lot of your skills that would impress audiences, definitely show that case study as the start project at the most noticeable location in your portfolio. Same thing with how to organize a case study structure. I would recommend having a brief overview section in the beginning of your case study to give a snapshot of key points that would interest employers. For example, you could have a brief overview section in the beginning of your case study to talk about what is the background of this project, who are the target audiences, what are some of the problems you are trying to solve for, what are the proposals, and what is the end results. So even if a hiring manager or recruiter only has one minute to read through your portfolio, they will be able to get all the signals they're looking for just by reading the overview section. Having a brief and straight to the point overview section in the beginning part of your case study is one of the secrets of engaging audiences who have little time to read through the full content. Because like I mentioned earlier that audiences won't be able to read through everything you have in a case study and they're likely to pay more attention to visuals. So you could explore using more visuals in a case study. For example, if you want to show an end-to-end -end user flow proposal, instead of presenting a detailed description of the user flows in text, you could use a storyboard to tell this user journey in a more engaging way. And let's say you want to present user pain points, instead of just describing the pain points in text, you could add some indicative illustrations to help audiences visually understand what the pain point is about. Reading illustrations is easier than reading text, so think about how to be creative and to transform text into compelling visuals and diagrams that tell a good story. The secret is don't show a cookie-cutter design process like On step 1, we did user research, we interviewed 5 people, and here is the analysis. On step 2, we created an affinity diagram, and here are the top 3 findings. I know some boot camps and online classes would ask students to follow a template to showcase a design process, 
please just don't do it. What's even worse is that I've seen people showing the exact same process for multiple case studies, and as a result, their case studies in their portfolios look quite similar. To showcase your product thinking and your understanding of design methods, which are something interviewers cares a lot about, you would want to explain the rationale of why you decided to choose a design method for a certain step in your process, because that's going to demonstrate your understanding of how to choose the right design method in different situations to solve a problem, and also talk about how the insights you got from one step inform the next step in your process. To connect the dots on different steps in your process, and to showcase that you are capable to break down a big problem into manageable steps and eventually solving a big puzzle. So this is everything I would like to share with you all today. Thank you so much for watching. If you think this video is helpful, please give it a thumb up. If you have any questions or any topics that you are interested in, please comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time.